And welcome back to Sunday Square Off. This was the year of the teacher. The Red for Red movement in the spring gave birth to about a half dozen teachers running for office on pro-education agendas. Many have come close to victory, but so far, just one has claimed it in a huge upset. By the way, Democrat Jennifer Pollack's path to the legislature could blaze a trail for others, teachers or even citizens, showing them the way to win. She's a former elementary school teacher. Now she is state representative elect Jennifer Pollock of Chandler. Welcome to Square Off and congratulations. Thank you very much and thank you for inviting me this morning. Has it sunk in yet? I don't think so. <laughs> So here's the deal. You are the top vote getter right now in Legislative District 17, East Valley, Chandler. You're 100 votes ahead of the incumbent Republican. Both of you uh, have won election. This is the, also the home district of House Speaker J.D. Mesnard, former House Speaker Mesnard. He had a close race. They don't elect many Democrats to LD17, do they? They don't. In fact, I think I might be the first one. You might be the first one. So that's how big a deal this is. Steve Weikert on your ticket in the Senate did fairly well. He did. Also didn't quite uh, get there. What's going on in LD17? We've been working in that district quietly for more than a decade. We've been running candidates. Um, we've been building the base. And I think that that's contributed to my success. When you say we, who's we? We is so many people. Um, there are the Democrats who live there. There are the teachers, um, different groups. Um, there's a huge group of Bangladeshi Americans who live in Chandler. They've come out. So you found all these disparate groups. Now, what makes your so, story so interesting, you're a pre-Red for Ed teacher who ran for office. You ran in 2016 for the same seat you didn't win. Mm -hmm. When did you get the idea that you should run and step out of the, the group? In about 2014, that's when I really started recognizing that we were having a problem with education. So in 2013, the school I taught at won the National Blue Ribbon Award, which was a huge deal. But then the following year, when we were having all of the celebrations, a lot of my colleagues left the classroom. They couldn't afford to teach anymore. So during that time, career ladder was phasing back, so teacher salaries were actually going down. So what steps did you take to make yourself a candidate? The first thing that I did was I went to training to learn how to be a candidate. So I did training through Emerge Arizona and also Leading for Change. And I got involved at the local level as a precinct committee woman, and I served as the secretary in my district. So I could start getting a feel for how political parties work. So you, you really created yourself as a candidate. You ran in 2016, you mm -hmm. didn't win. You no. came close, you didn't win. Did you give up at that point? Did you say this, this might not work? No, not at all. Why not? So even though I lost to Speaker Mesnard by two and a half percent, I was so excited. A lot of people were very sad that I lost, but I thought, oh my goodness gracious, that is close. And I decided with the momentum that we had built, we couldn't stop there. So my running mate, Steve Wickard, and I took about six weeks off for the holidays, and we started our campaign in January of 17. January of 17? Yes. Okay, so that is before Red for Ed, mm -hmm. a full year before Red for Ed. That's also before Save Our Schools Arizona got going with their Prop 305 uh, to stop the school voucher expansion. You never could have anticipated that would have happened, could no, you? No, no, not at all. So it was almost a perfect storm this spring. And so those two things happen out of the blue and suddenly it feels like you're on your way? Yes, because I'll tell you, when we were talking to voters at the doors, the main issue everybody brought up, regardless of their age, was education funding. So the message for others who want to do the same thing you've just accomplished, what is it? What would you tell them? Persevere. And I think it's important to show up too. If there are organizations in your community that say, please come, show up show up. Just be a presence out there. Absolutely, and listen to people. And now you're representing a swing district. Yes. Uh, so how does that affect your votes in the legislature, in the House? Have you thought about that? Well, I think that I need to represent my community, so I need to be open to listening to everyone who lives in my district. I'm excited to work with Representative Wenninger. We've already spoken on the phone, and I'm sure that there will be many things that we agree on, although we both know that there will be issues that we don't agree on. 
All right, State, Rep State Representative Jennifer Pollock, State Representative-elect Jennifer Pollock, thanks very much for joining us, and again, congratulations. Thank you.